well, I have to correct something. I'm not musically gifted. Neither am I a music educator. So I wonder why I'm part of this webinar series. But nevertheless, I thank God for the privilege to be with you this morning. First, let me acknowledge the partnership of Singapore Bible College, Bandung Theological Seminary, Philippine Choral Directors Association, Winsong Music Ministries, Sela, Bangkok, Surabaya, in the Philippines, Sambawitan, and, and of course, our church, the church where I minister, New Millennium Evangelical Church. Thank you for, for all your efforts behind this endeavor. I'm given only five minutes to share my devotional insights, and I've already used a chunk of it, so let me begin. My message today is actually very simple. I believe everyone that is with us has been affected in some way by this pandemic, the, by the way we work, the way we do things, the way we spend time with our families, even the way we worship. But I guess everyone would agree that one of the most affected areas is education, how students learn, how teachers teach, and how students and teachers would relate without being physically together. And I know this has been a big challenge to many of us, especially those who are not tech savvy. We have a lot of questions in our mind. Can the students learn online? What techniques are needed to reach out to them, and minister to them? What apps and gadgets are we to use? These questions will most likely be answered by our distinguished panelists today, led by Sir UD, Sir Matthew, and Sir AJ. But I would just like to remind you that Jesus himself is a teacher, a rabbi, when he was here on earth. And for three years, he taught his disciples, his students, or what we call learners. And they had a very close relationship. The disciples would follow Jesus everywhere. They would eat together. They would sleep together. They would discuss their lessons together. And basically, they would do everything. They would do life together. Imagine how close they were after those three years. Then suddenly, in an instant, everything would change. Just like today, everything has changed. Jesus would leave them in order to face the cross. He could no longer be with them physically. Teacher and students would no longer be together. And Jesus knew that that would create a lot of anxieties and fears in the hearts of his disciples. That's why Jesus gave them what is known as the upper room discourse found in John chapters 13 through 17. What can we learn from what Jesus would say to his students as he was about to leave them physically during his last day on earth? First, Jesus assured his disciples of his presence, though he will be physically absent. Same thing, you have to reassure your students that you are still with them in their journey of learning, in the learning process. And, not, and this is not only for your students. As music teachers, a lot may have changed in how you relate and teach your students. And there's a lot of adjustments and challenges, and this would create a lot of fears and anxieties. Jesus reassures you today, music teachers and educators, just as he reassured his disciples 2,000 years ago. Fear not, you are not alone in facing those challenges. Whatever difficulty you will face as an educator, God is with you. He will help you face them. And you can also reassure your students with this. Number two, Jesus understood his students' situation. Remember that your students are also going through the same struggles that you go through, maybe even more. And it is important at this point for you to understand where they are coming from. Jesus tried to understand his disciples' situation when he is no longer, when he would no longer be physically present with them. They would be, the Roman soldiers would be coming after them, the Jewish authorities would try to discredit them, and that is the key to knowing how to minister to your students, how to teach them during these unprecedented times. What are your students facing? 
knowing that his disciples would be at a loss, that they would be confused after he left, uh, Jesus would leave specific and very clear instructions to them. Same thing. This is not a time to be ambiguous with all the uncertainties around us. It is important that you would be clear and that you would understand where your students would be coming from. And as you understand them, third, Jesus gave them what they needed most. What do, you, what do your students need most at this time? Jesus knew that his students would need comfort and probably peace from all this uh, confusion. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit. And he knew that the Holy Spirit would be good for them. In John chapter 16, verses 6 to 7, he, he told them, It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. You see, the Holy Spirit was, was not only sent to be their comforter. Jesus has been, uh, just as Jesus has been the disciples, rabbi, and teacher, the Holy Spirit will now take on that role. The disciples often misunderstood what Jesus said and did. When the Holy Spirit came, he would help them remember those lessons that they have learned so that they can understand what Jesus had taught them. Brothers and sisters, you are not alone in teaching your students if they know and believe in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is your help, is your guide for them to understand even if they are not physically with you. God has put in each of your students a helper who transcends fears, worries, and physical distance, one who will guide them. And this same spirit makes us one today, even if we are not physically together. Fourth, Jesus shows us that as teachers, it is not the physical presence that is most important, but what you leave behind in their hearts, the hearts of your students, the impact that you will make in their lives. That's what they will carry with them for the rest of their lives. So, brothers and sisters, don't just aim for the head, aim for the heart. You can teach music techniques and all this stuff, and those are good, but that is what, that's not what's most important. I guess what is most important is how you have changed the lives of your students by what you teach. Teaching is about the heart, and with the heart, it transcends physical distance. You know, this pandemic has forced many of us to evaluate what is most important in our lives. Maybe we can also apply that to our teaching. Why are we doing what we are doing? The Bible tells us that there is a time for everything. There's a time that we can be with our students, and this is a time that we are not allowed to be with them. If we don't cherish the opportunity while we have it, we never know when it will be taken away from us. So don't miss those opportunities. Don't take for granted what you have now. You may no longer have them tomorrow. Fifth, lastly, Jesus prayed for his disciples in the last chapter of the discourse in chapter 17. He prayed that they would be protected from the evil one, that they will be one. Do you pray for your students? Sometimes prayer is more powerful than anything or any preparation that you would ever do. Brothers and sisters, this too shall pass. One day, you will just look back and see all these things and they will, they will just become something that is normal, something that is routine. But I pray that just as Jesus has, uh, what Jesus did and said to his disciples, you would also apply, especially during this time. Shall we pray? Father, there are so many times in our life, especially during this crisis, that we cannot see you. We cannot see your plans for us. We cannot understand the whys behind what's happening. We don't know what to do to best teach and minister to our students. But Lord, you are our greatest teacher, and you are all-knowing, compassionate, and gracious. And you understand everything that we are going through and everything that our students are going through. May you enlighten us today through today's discussion on what we should do to best help our students. 
the people that you have placed in our lives. May you help us as teachers, as educators, to be shining examples for you, not only to the students, but also to our fellow teachers. Bless our time this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Pastor Jason, for such a timely message of encouragement. Um, truly, heart, the heart transcends physical distance. Thank you so much for making time for us today. Thank you. All right. Let me introduce to you our three speakers for today. Very excited to introduce each one of them. First, I'd like to introduce my former professor at the University of the Philippines College of Music. Um, professor Eudenice Palaruan is an associate professor at the School of Church Music in Singapore Bible College, where he teaches choral conducting and music theory. He is also presently the choral director of the, symph of the Singapore Symphony Chorus. Hi, Sir UD. would you like to say hi to everybody? Hello, everyone. I will just scroll through the names, and I know most of you, and I'm excited to be in front of you right now. Yay. Um, our second speaker is a composer, composer A.J. Villanueva, is a faculty member of CBS College of Bible, um, also of the La Salle College of St. Benilde, as well as the University of the Philippines College of Music. He's very busy, right? <laughs> He holds a bachelor degree in composition from the UP College of Music, and he is also um, uh, he also holds a master of ministry degree from Grace School of Theology. He is now serving as the musical director and youth director of Christian Bible Church of Las Vinas. Let's welcome AJ. Hello, you forgot to mention that I was your former student as well. Oh, <laughs> that it will reveal my age, AJ. Hi. <laughs> I just done that. <laughs> yes, AJ was my student in music theory back then. I think, AJ, that was my second year of teaching, right? Yeah, you, that's right. Yeah, he was really excellent. So our last speaker, not uh, last but not the least, is... From Singapore, Mr. Matthew Siu. Uh, he teaches the worship team class at Singapore Bible College. His varied influences in classical music as well as jazz, rock, pop, and funk make him a versatile performer and an experienced music director in professional concerts. Let's welcome him. Hi, Matthew. Hi, Helen. Thank you so much for having, yeah, for having me. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. But I'm just here to learn from these guys. Yeah, so thank you very much. Let's go. Let's go. Yay. Um, we're so glad we have all of them with us this morning. And, you know, we'd also like to hear from you. So today we've um, launched a poll before we begin our discussion today. I'd like to encourage you, um, if you're on Zoom, if you're with us on Zoom, to please answer this poll as best you can and you'll see the results also of the votes in a while. So don't overthink um, and just pick your best answer. How comfortable are you with teaching online and modeling your musical intentions vocally? Very much so, pretty comfortable. I have reservations and I have no idea how to do this. <laughs> so click one and we'll release the results later for all of you to see. Okay, I'm assuming that everybody has now answered. Now we can officially begin our discussion. Um, you know, I can imagine how all of you had to somehow recalibrate. Oh, the poll came out again, or is it just me? Yeah, it came out again. Came out again. Okay, you might want to yeah. answer again. Okay, there. Yeah, I can imagine how, how all of you speakers had to somehow recalibrate your teaching methods and materials with the shift to the new normal. Could you tell us about your teaching experience and how this has changed given our present situation? Um, AJ will be speaking from 
the perspective of teaching theory, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe let's let's hear from AJ first. Okay. Um. Well, first of all, I have to admit that I am no expert in online teaching. Like, I think most of us were four months old or five months old in teaching online, but you know, here we are. So um, it was mid semester way back March and uh, it was a busy time and then the lockdowns happened. And so uh, abruptly we had to transition to online teaching. Uh, in just a matter of three days, I think, Zoom became a, a household name. Everybody knew Zoom right away. Mm -hmm. So um, the transition was very abrupt. And uh, at first, everyone thought that it was a cool thing to uh, be teaching and learning online. But uh, as, as the days passed, we, we suddenly, um, all these other issues are, uh, came um, like, um, suddenly we, we discovered that internet connectivity was a really, really big problem for a lot of students yeah. and a lot of teachers as well. And uh, we suddenly realized that we are really not ready for something like this. I was thinking back then that if this is going to uh, continue for a month or two months, I don't think I, can, I could do it. But uh, so, uh, so there was an abrupt transition to online teaching. And then suddenly uh, in, in UP, in University of the Philippines, uh, the Dean, uh, Dean Vern de la Peña formed an academic contingency plan committee and I was part of that. And so we thought of apps, uh, you know, uh, teaching methods that we can impart to our, to the other faculty so that we can continue teaching. And um, so th there were a lot of problems uh, with the students. Uh, basically, they were not connected online. And so it was difficult to teach uh, during that time. And now uh, with the transition, I think the, the most drastic change is connecting to the students. This, there is this big latency, uh, not just with the internet, but uh, a big latency with uh, you know the reactions in the classroom setting. I love seeing their reactions. I, uh, I, you know, I tell jokes and they laugh. But in Zoom, if you tell the same jokes, you no, know, it's not gonna work. So it's a. I laugh for you, man. Laugh at yourself. I laugh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a big transition and uh, now suddenly roles have multiplied. Um, I, during that time in March, I became a uh, tech support for Zoom in the College of Music. Now I became a video editor while teaching. So it has been a very drastic change, I think. The content of teaching is still there, but the way of delivering it is so much different. It's unlike what all of us really have experienced before. Yeah, thank you, AJ. Um, Matthew, um, how is Hi. it teaching worship classes? Yes, well, I, I teach young kids, as in like I teach people 13 to 19, so they are youth. So I'm not funny to them, so they weren't laughing before the virus started. So they're not gonna laugh after the virus started online, nothing changed. But um, I'm, I like what Pastor Jason said in the devotion about uh, the heart and the mind. So before, uh, we talk about before virus, right? Before the, the, the lockdown, we were talking a lot about music training, like I teach you guys. Guitar, less guitar, more drums, more less drums, more piano, all, all this stuff. And we were all in the same room. And uh, it was more of a like, very professional setting. They come, we play the, the, play the instruments, get the song done, rehearse over, we all head home. Maybe there's supper, maybe there's some. But now, because there's less playing together, because technologically speaking, we can't play together online because of the latency he was talking about. And so it's more uh, heart and mind on a different thing. We meet as a, as a band and then online and we share a lot of music. We say, hey, you guys, check out this new link, check out this new song. So there's a lot of new sharing. And uh, I'm a big advocate for personal journey, personal improvement. Like, uh, I'll ask my students, what are you practicing now? Okay, I'll give them homework to practice. I say, go do these scales, go do this drill. 
they are go de- do these drills and and uh, and so they are sharing the the exercises. They're doing all this stuff. So it's more of a. I am now just they they're all growing individually remotely, and I'm just like the gardener, just helping them to trim a little bit, and then we can only do this once a week. I would just mm. check in on it once a week. So it's not much of a group interaction thing, but they mm. all share music now. And the group chats are also more alive. They are just sharing links. So share music and share uh, personal development growth. Thank you. Yeah. Is it sort of similar with you, Sir UD? Um, by the way, I have to say that Sir UD was very uncomfortable with using technology before. And now he's better than many of us. So so what an encouragement. (laughs) So Yudi, how is it like to have an e-rehearsal with the SSC? Okay, so I have to be very honest with you. Every rehearsal, I always have to tell people, if you have something to share to improve the rehearsal, help me. I have to be very vulnerable in front of these people. See, uh, from a process-oriented physical rehearsal, uh, which we love doing, it became now a product-oriented virtual singing, yeah, which people think we should have a product all the time. Then I said, no, let's go back. We probably still can go back to a process-oriented, empowering e-rehearsal. Right? So you see, it's a choir. It's a symphonic choir. In the Philippines, we're all familiar with chamber choirs. Right? We're in a, probably in a Zoom of 10 people, maybe it's possible, or even 20 people, it's possible. But you're talking of 80 members. Um, when we performed uh, the, the works of Beethoven, we probably were 120. Then all of a sudden, we are faced, I'm facing 100 or more than 100 faces on screen, mm-hmm. yeah, which is impossible to do a downbeat. Bang, yeah? it's, it's, it's impossible, forget it. Yeah? So we have to, I have to uh, all of a sudden reduce what I'm doing from a two and a half, two hour, 45 minute rehearsal. So probably I have to trim it down now to a 30 minute. Mm. Because just to engage the people to your rehearsal or more for a 60 minute rehearsal, just you talking is very, uh, what do you call this? It's very counterproductive. It's so easy for them to shut down the volume and just do whatever they, they want and just, I, I, I'd rather listen to a YouTube, right? Yeah. So again, uh, it, it humbles me. Right? So from, and also from, a, from, from the practice of um, conducting them and commanding them yeah, in, a rehe- in a physical rehearsal, this time for the entire duration of the rehearsal, I had to sing, I had to demonstrate. Yeah? So you become, ve- uh, you become the focus, yeah? You have to show them that you yourself can do what, the, what you were trying to make them do during the past uh, rehearsal, when you were in physical rehearsal hall. Now, you expose yourself. In fact, our first e-rehearsal, I just realized I did not vocalize for the past three months and my, 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 my muscle, my air, my, my range was all very, uh, yeah, very raw and undeveloped. So it's very humbling. Not only that, the members, when they were 100 people singing together, they, they feel that they were strong. And now that I asked them to record their voices individually, all of a sudden they realize they're not that strong. They're not that, they're not that comfortable. Not only that, it's a, very, it's a challenge for them to listen to their own voices. Mm. And I tell you, many of them don't, actually don't like to hear their own voices. Yeah. So I had to shift. I, there's a need to shift from that dictator image to a shepherd teacher, from a maestro from the distant podium to a co-adventurer beside you. So I had to tell them, now, uh, instead of you thinking that you're auditioning in front of me, why don't you now think that you are singing in front of a teacher this time? So to, to, to put it succinctly, our e-rehearsal become more intimate in a way because now I have to face each single individual of that 80 member symphonic choir. Wow, what a challenge. <laughs> um, you mentioned that um, 
your rehearsals are now shortened, right? Because of people's attention spans and everything. I'm curious actually um, to ask um, all three of you whether the shortened amount of time that we now have interacting with our students or our singers, does that also affect preparation time? Does it necessarily mean that the preparation also lessens or does it double or how does that affect it? I could hear from anyone. Oh, uh, Matthew is pointing I, <laughs> AJ. Yeah, I think he is. Um, well, yeah, uh, times are shortened uh, when, we go, when we do online classes. But based on my experience uh, with this past month, I think preparation times have tripled or quadrupled before. No. <laughs> um, when, when I have a class the next day, I prepare the night before, prepare all the scores. Um, but now I have to uh, record some lectures if I need to. Uh, I need to think about uh, teaching and learning activities. Uh, I don't want to confine learning just with the lectures. So I give them some quizzes, a lot of quizzes. I give them submission assignments. And um, it's, it really takes time to find links to online resources because everything should be online now. So I really have to take time to find uh, uh, links to online resources and legal online resources. That's very important. <laughs> and uh, I also have to think of navigating the course. So if I give a quiz, uh, submissions, is it enough? for them to learn the subject? Is it too much for them? Uh, and uh, I think also that uh, aside from preparation, we also think of the students because when submission time comes, sometimes they, some people don't submit uh, on time. So we have to be lenient. We have to, sometimes I extend the deadline a lot of times just for them to submit because uh, you know, I think that's part of preparation and also preparing our heart. <laughs> you know, when when we do online classes, uh, so you this right, you, it, it, it becomes intimate. So, you know, uh, when you do a Zoom class and you have a close up of your head, you, they can see all your facial expressions. Mm -hmm. Unlike when you're in class, you're behind the table, you're, uh, they can see half of your body or you're standing on the whiteboard. Uh, they don't see much of your facial expression. So you have to prepare for that. You're like, you're like in a way an actor. So you have to guard all your facial expressions because any bad facial expressions, they might have, they might take it negatively, you know? Mm. Thank you. Anyone else would like to add? Preparations? Oh, Matthew, you are on mute. No, don't worry. No, I'm saying that he, he spends a lot of time to do the, to prep videos. Uh, mm -hmm. I understand that like maybe he was saying that maybe like four to one, right? Let's say four hours or eight hours to prepare one hour of video. But the good news is you can use that many times. Hopefully yeah, you can use that right. more, right? So uh, like, like my, my lessons, my drills, the warm-ups for singing, we, we do it once. And then at the start of the class, we just say, okay, check out this link. And then they'll do it now mm -hmm. with the video, like a workout video, right? Everyone's doing the workouts now. So uh, time taken to spend to create those videos, uh, I, I would think are worth it because after, after a long time, you create 10 videos, 20 videos, and that's now your library to go out there and that's say, right. I've, I've got all these recorded, just take it. Yeah, so I think it's worth it. Yeah, it's, worth it. it's a new learning thing for all of us too, right? Uh, so yeah. Yudi, you wanna add something? Yeah. yeah, well, when it comes to preparation, uh, before I, I say this thing, many of you know me as a, as a technophobe person who doesn't use the, any software. And to be honest with you, um, a confession, I only learned how to use Sibelius when I arrived in Singapore, which means those of you who are seeing my composition, one of the requirements, if they ask me to compose something that I, I have to tell them, you have to bear with my handwriting. I am a quillant person. So now that I have to use technology, believe me, I even have to, to prepare exercises and actually notate the exercises for a particular, uh, for a particular uh, 
passage in the piece that we are working on right now. Né? See, in, in choral music, if you change the repertoire, what you recorded in the past will be a part of your bank already. That's, you're right, Matthew. Yeah? But if it, it, in, a, in a music with more than 100 measures, and you know that in every phrase there are difficulty, you kind of have to help the, your choir how to navigate the difficulty. Yeah? Can I, am I, uh, am I uh, able to share? Share screen. Yeah, I think I can. Let's see. Let's see. Yes, you can. Can you see this? Yes. Can you see this, Beverly? Yes. Ah, this is part of the Andi Freude. We're doing Beethoven's Andi Freude. And there's this part at the end that goes, uh, and that's just the bass part. The tenor is even, even worse than that because it has a leap span of one and a half octave, right? So I had to say, how can I make it chewable for the people to at least uh, to navigate this on their own? So I have to, I have to make a, th a, 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 a three line exercise. Exercise one, they can do dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. And then I even have the counting exercise. One e and the two e and the one e and the two and the one e and the two and the one e and the two e and the all those things. Eh? And that is just one of the exercises that I prepare every week. Mm. There are lots of difficult passages in the Beethoven symp uh, Symphony Number no. Nine that you know that they can only do it when they're together with other people. But now that they're alone, uh, um, working on on, on them. You have to kind of give them um, the how, the how to, how can they practice this on their own, right? Mm -hmm. And that alone to, to prepare that kind of uh, a lesson that is, let's say, an eight bar uh, passage, it took me the whole morning just to, just to encode them. Yeah? And then you have to send it to them and you have to send it to them at least a week before your actual rehearsal. Yeah? And yeah, and so now, the prepar but uh, at least the nice thing is that Matthew is right that once they have it, they can always go back to it and rehearse it on their own. Mm -hmm. okay? All I need to do now is to ask them, please record it and I'll, I'll check it. In one week, I have to listen to 64 recordings yeah. and do comment to all those 64 recordings. That's why in the preparation now, you're supposed to make it really short. Short, but productive. You cannot... Mm -hmm. You cannot make them record the entire choral part of the Andi Freude in one mm -hmm. week. So you have to be strategic in what you choose. Definitely. To, yeah, Definitely. to let them do. I think our results for the first poll are ready. If you'd like to see. So 47% of our viewers have reservations about online teaching. Zero percent, very much so. What? percent, <laughs> I have no idea. Thirty-five mm. percent. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Now uh, let's talk about content, um, since you know, like there are so many adjustments that we have to do given the limited time, given also the the internet connections of our students. So we have to be really strategic what we want to present, right, in our lessons. How, do, how does content then vary these days as to before? How do you pick and choose what you want them to learn? Well, I think, first of all, it's a challenge uh, for a lecture class like music theory. Mm. Um, to condense an hour and a half lecture to maybe 15 to 20 minutes. So we really have to choose. We, yeah, you're right. We really have to be strategic in choosing uh, what to teach our students. And um, the good thing, I think, is that since we are online, uh, we can have a lot of variations. We can have lecture videos. We can meet them in Zoom. We can give them a quiz. Um, just like uh, the rehearsals Sir Yudu is doing, uh, they can record themselves in solfege. I did that uh, way back in March. I had them record themselves because uh, it's an 
easier thing to do for them since they uh, will not be on Zoom. So yes, I had, we really have to check them one by one. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so we have recorded lectures. Um, and sometimes I think we don't need lectures, just activities. We can also uh, gather some links from YouTube and link it to them. There are a lot of good, uh, good production videos on YouTube. But of course, it depends on your topic. Uh, and um, so there are a lot of things you can do. And uh, it's just a matter, I think, of still creativity. Uh, we are teachers, we are creative before uh, in our physical classes. We can still be creative now in our online classes, I think. Thank you. Um, so you, you mentioned earlier that you had to create some exercises for them. Um, so like in, in a way, um, is it that you try to analyze the music and then get some principles out of that, then those main principles then you use as content for your rehearsal? Is that? Basically, yeah, that's very true. Yeah. So what I do is that I first have to sing it myself. Let me negotiate it myself. I always believe that if it's difficult for the conductor, it must be more difficult for my choristers. Mm. Okay, then I have to see first, how does it work for me? If I can do this, can it work for my singer as well? So many of the things that I make them do, I have to make sure that I thread through the path you know, before I make uh, before I guide them. Yeah? So, so very much so. Yeah. Um, not only that. See, with eighty singers, each each single each single chorister has its own issue. Mm -hmm. So after I listen to them, I have to. I have to categorize who are the people under this issue, let's say, of oh, breath issue. The other uh, group of people, oh, these are the intonation problem uh, people. So you, you kind of make a categorization of who are the people who would need a particular uh, vocal concentration and particular tonal concentration. And there are also those who have problem with languages, yes? Culturally, not all of them can do a brr. For example, and you're singing Brüder, Freude, and all those things. Yeah? And we have problems, especially among the Chinese, that they don't have the rolled R. And you kind of give them some tricks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Say, so, okay, go to the D, um, migrate to the letter D, say Buddha instead of Brüder. <laughs> or the other one, uh, uh, among, the, uh, among the Asians, the lower Asia, um, the South Asians, they have problem with the U. Let's say the, the, the umlaut U. Now the Chinese have that. They have mm. the U sound, but we don't have that. You, you have to, again, teach them. And, and the thing is this, when they're together, you don't hear this problem because there are lots of them. But now that they're individual, you kind of see, okay. okay. You, so you have to specifically, one by one, tell these people, okay, this is how you do it. But then that means all my comments must be also be very short. Mm. I cannot make an entire phrase because doing 64 people a week is, is not a joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Matthew, do you also listen to um, recordings from your band members and evaluate them the way AJ and Sir UD evaluate the submissions? Um, the, the big trend now is uh, virtual choirs or virtual bands. You know how those, the split band thing yes. now. So we, if we are doing a collaborative project, where everyone's just submitting their track. Uh, just small sharing about how this whole process is done. You, you guys have been doing it before. Uh, I will create a click track, a bass track, maybe the piano with, a, with the metronome inside, and then I'll send it out to them with the score, and then they'll, they'll record their part over it, and then they'll send it back. By then, it'll be, hopefully it's right, it, or, or it's any tweaks, I'll just tell them like, okay, I need you to, in the chorus, build here, what, whatever, over here. Mm -hmm. So um, the recordings I get, are probably sort of ready and, and, and nicer. It's not so much of the singing bit, but then again, it's, it's the, the whole song. Uh, only if they have problems in the recording process, they'll, they'll call me when they're recording it and say, I've, I've got a problem with uh, bar 64, and then I'll get work with them on, on that. But it's, it's more of, yeah, it's not that. 
it's not as detailed as the as the vocal stuff. They don't have problems with rrr, yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. Actually, this this leads me to the the next question that I wanted to bring up, which is, what are some of the tools that you've been using? Like, what are some of the requirements in terms of gadgets that the students have to have in order to be able to um, successfully do online learning or if you have also recommendations on apps that work well or learning management systems would, could you recommend those that work for you uh, i think yeah, hardware wise it's uh you can just have your smartphone or tablet i've had students who really um endure <laughs> the class just with their phones a laptop is all, always good and uh, in terms of apps uh, if for the listeners if you are uh you're in a school you're an inst in an institution maybe you maybe they are subscribed to a learning management system like uh big sky that's what we have in vinyl uh there's also canvas there's also moodle there are a lot of learning management systems and i think uh for a school setting at least that this is important because in that learning management system we can communicate with students we can give them their assignments we can set up online quizzes uh it's a platform where they can also submit uh files to you and another thing um is our edu email and uh this is a very powerful tool so if you are a faculty in a school if you are a student your edu email holds a lot of power because there are a lot of free stuff out there if you register with it through your edu email um and uh and also uh, there are also apps, this is for teachers, that we use every day that have features that we might have not discovered yet. For example, we know PowerPoint. We, some of us uh, use it every week. Did you know that in PowerPoint, you can record a video lecture inside PowerPoint uh, synchronized with your slides? I never knew that until a month ago. And I kind of use PowerPoint every week. And... Um, uh, there are so much tools out there. Uh, if your uh, school is subscribed with Google Education Suite, that's a lot of tools at your disposal. Microsoft has a lot of tools for your disposal. And uh, tutorials online are also important um, since we are talking about uh, learning online. You might as well experience, in a way, learning online. So if you are kind of confused with an app that you use or uh, you want to discover more features, there are so much tutorials online. And I'm kind of surprised some of some tutorials, for example, the one for PowerPoint dated three years ago and I didn't know that it existed. And if you don't want to uh, search for it on YouTube, always ask, always ask someone tech savvy to help you or teach you. That's the, uh, the best thing to do. So there are so much tools out there. Some of them you might be using actually every day. Mm. Wow, thanks. For me, for worship band, yeah. No, worship band, I, I would say for musicians, uh, garage band, if you're using a, a Mac, that, that's something for you just to record your own thing and just to submit the thing. Yeah, submit your recording. That's, that's for me, the, besides whatever he, 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 he mentioned. I mean, so it's just Zoom, GarageBand, record your stuff, happy. Plus, if you want to write music, then Sibelius, like, all mm -hmm. those notation stuff, MuseScore, I think that's the free one. Sibelius is expensive, unless you have educational discount. Dot edu. Yeah. 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 If, you yeah if, have, I mean, if you don't have a Mac, what would be a good um, alternative GarageBand? I, I'm, I'm not a PC guy, man. You got to ask, uh, is there a PC guy? I think Reaper. I'm a PC guy. About, yeah, are you Reap do you use Reaper? I use uh, Cakewalk. Cakewalk, Bandlab. okay. Cakewalk. Band and to Cakewalk. add to your the tools that you suggested, there are also a lot of uh, online collaboration apps that you can use, like Band Labs, yeah. free. And yeah. uh, there's an app called Jam Kazam. They boast of ah, yes. uh, online collaboration real time. I haven't tried it. Yeah. So if yeah. someone has tried it, please tag me. So, you know. It's like it's like 
playing your instrument in Zoom, but without yeah. the like lesser like. But it's or yeah. that one if yeah if so you found Zoom hard to navigate. That one's like times nine. Yeah, to, just to tweak so it's it for out. Tech that, yeah. yeah, it's like I I don't even do it. I <laughs> jam to jam. No. Yeah. So but, you, yeah. you use Zoom? We use Zoom. Yeah, but it's just that the first e, e rehearsal we had, we didn't, of course, we first didn't know that the limitation of the first premium, I think it's only 100 people. <laughs> so there were some people left outside the room. So we have to apply for 500. The next level is 500 after the 100. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we use Zoom. So in, uh, even in our uh, breakup group, we can, do, we can still use the Zoom. And then in my uh, individual or uh, four, four people lesson, we can we still use Zoom. And actually, if I have four students in Zoom, I can actually ask them all to turn on their microphones. It's not a problem. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But still, I don't require them to sing together. It's a round robin thing. Yeah? So yeah, we use Zoom. But aside from what we call the technological requirement there's also a physical requirement you see it's a choir it's it's a choral exercise and one of most of the problem here is that when we rehearse from 7 30 to 10 15 in the evening many singaporeans in their hdbs or in their uh, condos the the neighbor will, will will bang on your door if they hear you sing at 9 30 in the evening so yeah so yeah, so we have to adjust our rehearsal earlier. And even before I, I rehearse them, I first have to ask them, are you in the position right now to sing loud in, in where you are? And I have to consider that. And mm -hmm. honestly, some of them said, no, I cannot sing high, I cannot sing loud. Then mm -hmm. sing one octave lower. <laughs> you know? yeah. And also I have to uh, ask them to, uh, as much as possible, don't use the, 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 the headphone with the microphone near near the lips, okay? As much mm. as possible. Distance from, from the keyboard or from the microphone. Thank you for all these ideas. I think it's now time for another poll question to hear from you. So we'll post that question. There you go. How are you personally coping with this teaching or learning adjustment? I think this is speaking to you as either a teacher or a student. Um, so four options. I see this as an adventure and I'm very excited to learn new ways of teaching slash learning. Second, I see this as a challenge um, and it's both overwhelming and beneficial for everyone. Third, I am somewhat confused and will need a lot of guidance and encouragement from people. And the last one, I am burnt out with the massive amount of preparations needed to execute the tasks. Ooh. So answer away. Ow. Oh, just wanted to add that uh, this for this new normal you're talking about, I mean, the teachers need to learn how to teach and the students need to learn how to learn better. So we are all adjusting this new method. So that's that's what I was like, you're saying, we need to figure out their new context, like that, how are they receiving this, this education? Like their limitations of the sound and everything and technology, we, because we don't have to have them to buy new gear just to, yeah. to, to learn this stuff. I mean, even at the analog level, if not for Zoom, I'm sure we can do it all on email. Yeah, like, a, yeah. or a pen pal kind of thing. I wrote, but yeah. yeah. Mm. I agree because once they start uh, emailing you about something that they don't understand, you know, I use my, my WhatsApp in, in, in actually recording myself and answering, yeah. demonstrating, I just said to, to the yeah. person, you do it, yeah. Lower larynx, okay, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's good. 24 hour tech support, right? Voice on, yeah. Speak. Oh, I have that. Oh, yeah. Am I doing it right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and actually, I also know of some teachers who teach one on one voice through yeah. Facebook Messenger because some access it more. So. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Actually, Whatever I took up at one of the questions from earlier, and it talks about voice lessons and what particular yeah. apps yeah. or methods we can use. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, these days more than ever, people need a lot of support and encouragement at a time when many of us 
have kind of lost our grounding. So I think it's it's good to now kind of, um, Sir Yudi mentioned earlier about kind of rethinking our roles as teachers or as maestro, maestra, to now becoming more of a shepherds, right? Co-adventurers, right? So maybe now we can talk about like how we can make use of this time to provide care, to provide pastoral care and encouragement online to our students. Do you have any ideas or any things that you've been doing to do this more? I think one very great tip is to always be available. It's kind of tough for the teacher to always be available. But for students, it's a big thing that you are always available on WhatsApp or Viber. They can, they can email you. And uh, um, in one school where I teach, we were always uh, instructed to leave our contact details, which I personally would not do if uh, this is not an online setting. But um, just to know that their teacher is there uh, is a big thing. And... Um, also, one thing is, uh, this is kind of tough as well, but teachers shouldn't be too strict now. And uh, we are also taught to be lenient. I, I said that word earlier. And uh, I know there are some opposition to, for some teachers to be lenient because I, I can't make him pass this class because he didn't deserve it or something. But we should also consider what the student is going through. There are, I have a lot of students last term who have not submitted their final requirements and they emailed me that they are struggling um, mm -hmm. mentally with everything that's happened. So I have to understand everything uh, that they are going through. So besides being a shepherd, a teacher, you're also a counselor in a way. You should have to say the right things. It's, a difficult thing for a teacher to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and being flexible also with, with, with mm -hmm. deadlines and everything um, yes. with their considering internet connections, right? Yeah. 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 Well, for, for me, in terms of the, the heart, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm just going to, I keep going in this direction. Anyway, uh, the good thing about now, so Yudi was saying that now he has more one-to-one -one interactions with his students. Yeah, so I have that too. And uh, I mean, everyone's going to just WhatsApp you. The group chat is alive, but Singaporeans don't ask questions in the group. They always ask you directly once the class is over. So I, I've got a lot of midnight sessions on the phone or on WhatsApp with people telling them. The question's usually like, why do we do things this way? Why, why is the other person like that? I, I don't like what he said. And then we are all discussing what's the best way to do it, why we do it. And, and we learn together. And, and that gives us this chance that we probably wouldn't have before the pre-lockdown period. Like usually they just lesson done and bye-bye, it's home and see you next week. But now the lesson never ends. It's just like 24 hours lesson. You, you go to sleep with the question and you wake up with the answer. And then yeah, the guy just keeps on going. Yeah, and then the, the the chat group just keeps going. Yeah, so that yeah. Sorry, so you do you can. No, that's okay. Very wonderful. Yeah. I'm, For me, I would say uh, I would say agree with them that they're also that you are also struggling. Mm. Yeah, I mean, be very honest to them that uh, we are, we are in the same boat. Yeah. And uh, it's the first thing that I told them. I am also still learning all, all these things. In other words, empathize with them if possible. Yeah? Empathize. Mm -hmm. What difficulty they, uh, they, they feel right now, you have to agree with them and, uh, and be with them. Yeah? Um, the most uh, important thing that I could say now is that be very encouraging always mention something positive before you give them your comment yeah because i listen to them yeah, yeah? and some of them are uh, of course you you say that they're weak in many aspects but always get something that is positive that you can tell the person mm. uh, yesterday someone messaged me and said and he he, he even cir encircled what i said very good in the middle range sir you're so encouraging thank you so much for telling that yeah of course, I, 
uh, what I want to say is that she, the person must train the higher range this time, but he can only do that if he can get the quality of the middle range and bring it up. This is something like that. Eh? So focus on what they can already do and then empower that. Mm. Okay, then move on. Yeah, thank you. Uh, before I transition to um, the, the last question, actually, I'd like to show the results from the second poll. Wow, majority. I see this challenge as both overwhelming and beneficial for everybody. Great. Wow. Oh, there's 1% that's burnt out. Oh, no. Is that me? <laughs> <laughs> Small question, that... AJ. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I just want to ask, like, how much of this, of what we're doing right now, of all this virtual stuff, the big change to the virtual stuff, will you want to keep after lo the lockdown is lifted? Oh, wonderful question. Yeah. Whoa. Actually, um, in the uh, College of St. Manil, uh, they are already thinking of offering both online and physical classes, even if this is all over. So I will keep a lot of my content. And... Um, we usually, we usually think that this thing is kind of um, uh, very useful and uh, it saves time. But I think that a hybrid of online and physical meeting would be beneficial for yeah. the future. I don't, I don't know if that's even possible, but um, being, you know, a, a, as a husband, being at home and... Uh, taking care of the house is something that I haven't you know, done before, but now I can do oh, it Patrick, after yeah. this. Maybe I can cook, you know, I can fix some stuff. So it's something that uh, is convenient in a way, but yeah. still as a teacher, I'd still want to see their faces, the students' faces, yeah. their reactions, their body language, and everything, especially when teaching music. There are still a lot of things that are easier, uh, that are easier done uh, you know, physically, like mm. salt fetch, you know, so. Yeah. I mean, like, there's no replacement for meeting together to worship and to sing and yeah. to play. Because, yes. yeah, even if they could do that online, I'll prefer to do it in the same room. But mm. I like my meetings or my classes now online. At least everyone, no one's late. Everyone's like, okay, <laughs> we'll meet you. At, no one's taking the bus. You can't tell me the bus is late. Yeah, you yeah. can't tell me it's raining. I, I'm going to see you at home. You wake, you wake up, brush the teeth, see you here, right? So... <laughs> We have less punctuality issues now, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Yeah. What do you think? Because um, earlier you were talking about like how we can reach out to our students, right? But how about um, for the teachers themselves? How do you think we can prevent ourselves from burnout? Knowing that we have to prepare so much more, we have to kind of fulfill multiple roles, not only as a teacher this time, but also to be there for them um, on an individual level. How can you take care of yourself to be more effective? Okay, my wife is, 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 is raising her hand saying, have a oh. very loving wife. Oh. <laughs> a very prayerful wife, okay? I agree, my dear wife, yeah? <laughs> I think this helps as in just knowing that all teachers are struggling as well. Uh, I think we have a chat group of just teachers and leaders who are just sharing resources. I, I have a chat group with the worship leaders, uh, team leaders of many churches, maybe seven of them. And we all share tips like, are you guys, you guys have a problem getting songs out this week of your online service? And so we'll just share. Okay, I've, there are some churches who collaborate like that. Like this week, I'm seeing Amazing Grace in, in E major. You want my backing track? We'll send it to you. You add your singers to it. I'll add mine. Yeah. And then everyone's just sharing all this stuff. Uh, mm. Tech support too. Uh, Zoom is, uh, well, GarageBand isn't working for me. How do you get this? And everyone just puts in a chat. So that, I think that only reduces the stress levels of uh, executing uh, the work part. But if you're talking about the pastoral care, like I'm so tired, so burnt out. I mean, that one, we, we can, yeah, we can do that with all the other sharing and all the encouragement and all the, uh, yeah, all the stuff. Yeah, I agree. Um, actually, 
uh, to be honest. Just last month, I was burnt out with all the multiple roles I'm trying to do uh, in school, uh, thinking of my future, uh, church. And I think it's important for teachers to take a break sometimes. Um, I'm not sure how you could do it uh, if your classes are, are already going on, but it's important to take a break and take, uh, and, uh, take things into their proper perspective. And one thing that I realized, uh, Matthew just said it, that we are actually not alone in this and that uh, a lot of people are struggling in the same way sometimes maybe much more difficult. And um, we really need to you know, go to the Lord and ask for strength. And uh, every time, this is my experience, that um, I found it very um, soothing and relaxing that before I start any work in the day, I spend time with the Lord. Uh, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a corner and the sofa drinking my coffee and just have a quiet moment with the Lord so I can um, have more wisdom with my decisions throughout the day, maybe throughout the day. So it's not just about, um, well, a support group is really good. Um, and, uh, but all our strength really comes from the Lord. Mm. The the mm. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's amen to that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for such a rich sharing today. Um, I think we have a lot of um, questions, actually, from our viewers that we can take time now to answer. Um, let's start with a question from Mamalu Hermo. Um, Hi, Mamalu. Yeah. Hers is about solfege in particular, and it's a two-part question. First, what is the best platform to use for online group with individual recitation for solvage class. And then if you can recommend some available resource materials in solvage, which are available online. Is this a question um, for AJ? Yeah, probably. I hope all of us will answer, but um, the best platform to use for online group, I think um, there are a lot of video conferencing apps out there, uh, outside of Zoom. Zoom is very feature rich, but I think uh, um, it's just a secret, it's kind of overrated. <laughs> but there's Google Meets, uh, it has better sound, um, Microsoft Teams, mm, yeah. and uh, basically any video conferencing app which allows the teacher or the host to mute everyone at once. I think that's very important and beneficial and which also allows the teacher to unmute uh, selected students. That's also important. Um, so, and uh, for resources online, uh, resource materials in Solfage, which are readily available online. I, I usually recommend uh, the website teoria.com. Let me just check if that's correct. Yeah, Teoria, T-E-O-R-I-A dot com. They have uh, a lot of exercises for solfege and uh, ear training. Uh, and uh, I think quizzes are different every time you log in. So it's, uh, it's a good uh, interactive tool to, to give to our students for solfege if you don't want to follow uh, textbook or whatever and I'm sure there are a lot of textbooks out there in Amazon and uh, yeah thank you yeah um, let's now move on to another question this is from uh, Kuya Roy and Atelin Fabelia um, AJ's uncle Roy hey <laughs> yeah so they have two questions actually the first question is about rehearsal and how to manage repertoire goals and timelines given the time limitation of a rehearsal. So that's the first. The second question is with regards to voice and how um, with the online sound quality issues, how can teachers deal um, with the tone of the singer? 
like how can you properly assess that what you're hearing is <laughs> what is the actual <laughs> yeah so two questions okay let me answer the first one regarding uh repertoire management and especially timeline right I, right now we i don't see that problem because our next word because if ever we have a timeline and a deadline, that means it's already, everything is good because we cannot perform, <laughs> right? But right now we don't see any, uh, we don't see any immediate performance of, for let's say, of, of a choir. Our next performance, if ever the Lord will will allow, I would say the Lord will allow, is November. That will be our next performance. That's the Andy Freude under Suzuki Mazaki. Yeah? If that will not continue, then it's going to be December. So uh, if now it's July, I think I have much, much time to really finish it, uh, the product by, by November. But remember that our, our goal in our rehearsal is, is, is no longer to finish the piece. It's really more one is physical upkeep or vocal upkeep. That's a very important that they are physically uh, um, prepared if ever face-to-face -face rehearsal will now come. Eh? Uh, breathing, eh? muscle. Range is somewhat compromised at the moment because of, you know, of the neighbors. You cannot really sing so high and so loud unless you live in a landed house. Yes? Or in a, unless you have also a, 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 an insulated uh, room where you can always sing. Okay? Um, now, the second question regarding the, the quality of the voice, that is really trivial. It is really, really, really trivial. So the only thing that I can check is, is the rhythm right? Is the pronunciation right? Is the intonation right? That's the only thing I can check. Now, when they submitted to me their works, I gave one person a comment that please don't use reverb when you record your, your, your assignments. And the person answered immediately, said, Sir Yudi, I am in, I, I knew, I, I transferred in a house where it's still very empty, so the sound is very echoey. He said, oh, I'm sorry about that. And, and it, it's true, it sounded so nice. I thought it's uh, uh, the real voice because of the reverb, but actually it's not. Eh? So I can only, uh, I can only check on those very uh, objectively on those three things, rhythm, Tempo, uh, rhythm, intonation, um, and uh, and diction. If it's a, a foreign language, now on tone quality, you kind of test it. You just have to test it because what you think is bad is actually very good wow. where they are, and vice versa. Yeah. yeah. The same thing in piano lesson. I was having a piano. I, I was giving a piano lesson yesterday, and the sound sounded like tin can when the. And I know that my student is playing in a very, very fine piano. And it, you know, do you experience that, that when they play, there's always a decay? It won't, won't, won't. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to take it uh, very objectively on whether they're playing the right note and the right tempo. Mm. But the right tone is something that you kind of have... Wait, maybe. I, I don't have the answer. I hope someone can help us from the from our viewers, how can we check the tone? Uh, I think no, no, yeah. No. Here, she says, what helps also if one is using Zoom for voice lessons, turn on the original sound function. That's right. So there seems to be a setting. Yes, go to, uh, yeah, you go to the audio there. Yeah, that's true. Okay, great. What happens is uh, it turns off the noise reduction and noise suppression. So it sounds like a tin can because Zoom recognizes it as noise. So that's right. That's why it's decayed. Oh, wow. New learning. Yeah. The next question is about, a ba uh, about band. Band and choir also, yeah. Um, this is, so, so the question is, I take it choirs and bands don't sing or play together during Zoom. Are the members then muted during class? When you're, when you're talking, they're muted. And then when each individual singer sings, then you unmute, correct? Yes, yes. As, as a group, they, are, they, are all, they all take turns to show that their part, and then you, you comment as a teacher, and then the next person go, right? Uh, I think that's how some choirs are run. You can ask the UD. Is that how you 
but that depends on the amount of participants. You can't do that for 80 people, right? It's going to be 80 minutes if you go one round for, for one line, right? Uh, I think for, for groups less than 15, I think you can do one-on-one. -on -one. And then, uh, so Yudi mentioned before in our discussion earlier, the breakout rooms, I think you can engage yeah. all 80 in a, in a, in a opening session assembly and like, hi, everybody, today we're going to do this, 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 this. And now you can break up. And then he puts them into groups of, small groups of four or five or yeah. six. And then, and then they can, look up. I, I'll, leave that, I'll leave him to share. How do you do the small group thingy? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's me. Yes, yes, that's you. Yeah, <laughs> that's you. Oh, okay. So, so, so what I do is that okay. In in uh, now I have to divide my time. The first thirty minutes I only take four students. Okay. So you, so in other words, I have to take four for every thirty minutes. In one Monday rehearsal, I can take sixteen people divided into four different ensemble, and then the one in the middle is what we call the tutti or the everyone uh, in, a, in a Zoom for the, what we call the conductor's marking yeah? and uh, general tips. In that one hour uh, tutti rehearsal or group rehearsal, it's basically just giving them all the, the guidelines, the musical and the technical guidelines. So I can, I, last Monday I was able to address four pieces yeah? and also give a general review on the recordings that they submitted. Yeah, so, so that's it. Uh, so, so what really works are those four sets of ensemble rehearsal with four people each. Okay, thanks. Uh, any tips on private vocal lesson? Is it similar to piano lessons, the preparations, the apps needed? Mm. Instrumental lesson, same as voice lesson, right? Well, okay, if I can answer from a piano lesson, uh, piano teacher perspective, I, I, you don't see it now, but usually I have a camera uh, with a top view of my fingers, right? And then I have another camera like that. Zoom allows you to have two cameras in, in one call. And so when I, when I teach, I can just do, 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 and the guy can see it like, like that, do, 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 do. Uh, that, that helps. Um, even better if the student has that, and then you can tell them about his fingering and his technique and, all, and what he's doing. That's for the, the piano part. As for the sound, like you said, either turn on original sound or have the piano go directly into the computer through an audio interface or through MIDI, something like that, and it's clearer. And so that's, that's just those ways. But nothing beats having a piano lesson in person, of course. Yeah. Mm. As for the singing bit, uh, you can ask. But yeah, I think whatever, he, he, he's covered the singing bit. Hmm. We, we also have some questions about teaching children. Yeah, this is, this is a much bigger challenge, huh? Like teaching children and some resources that we have for either piano or music theory that would be effective for online teaching. Any recommendations on that? Hmm. Oh, how I wish Leah is here. Leah, yeah, I know you're here. <laughs> Le Leah is here. Yeah. Leah. Chat. Leah, you might want to write something or Mam Mam Lynette. <laughs> Be before she answers, I can just I just say I mean, I I have no patience to teach my own kids piano, so I just I get Simply Piano from the iPad. It just puts it on a piano. It it just does it. I'm not selling Simply Piano app. I'm just saying that there are all these toys that you see. Simply yeah. Piano, yeah, right. She, my daughter uses Simply Piano. She's six. Yeah, and then they just, they just tell you, they play the game, right? Play C, 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 and then, they, and then they tell you, yes, well done, and then you just go to D, 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 D. Yeah, so I'm not going to sit there for an hour and tell her C, 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 yeah. The iPad has more patience than I do. Yeah, so I'll let her do it. I think we're still waiting for an answer. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> okay. It's okay. <laughs> If they will not answer, uh, Mom, Lynette, we are starting to work with our kids on Zoom and Google Classroom. Uh, that's from um, Dr. Lynette. Ah, okay. <laughs> Improvisation. Improvisation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me just, can I say something about improvisation? Because I, I'm a big improviser when it comes to classes. Um, but I think what would help uh, in teaching 
even kids or uh, adults or college students that we really need to have some sort of foresight with what we want to teach so that every meeting we will not panic because uh, we know that our what we taught them is enough for that week. So we really have to set lessons for every week. And I think it takes a lot of time and commitment for the teacher to do that. But uh, when the classes are going, uh, it's going to be a lot easier because you can set your limit. So, you know, if in 15 minutes you have already discussed what you needed to discuss, and that's it, you don't need to go any further. Mm. Here, um, Leah said most of the material she makes, she chooses a short section of a piece and focuses on that, anticipate all the possible reminders the kids may need tonally and rhythmically. And then, oh, Leah has a few assistants to, to yeah. help with it. Another answer here from Olivia. Uh, for warm-up for Children's Choir, I share a YouTube video on Zoom and ask them to follow along. Maybe there are better ways. <laughs> Ma'am Lynette says the kids are faster and better than the old people. Very true, huh? Yeah. Leah says when it comes to theory, YouTube can be your best friend. I oh. use classrooms to make short quizzes for them. Okay, visual, a lot of visual. Yeah, a lot of visual. Limit, um, this is from Viel Eugenio. For young children, limit your sessions to 15 to 30 minutes. Yeah, not, not only young children, I think <laughs> everyone. <laughs> very true, very true. Yeah. Have interactive material, visuals, and varied activities. Mm. I'm already tired thinking about these preparations. <laughs> and only for 15 to 30 minutes, huh, right? Yeah. Um, I also provide recordings for the kids. Leah says she warms up her children's choir uh, while they're on mute. Mm -hmm. So she's assuming that they're doing the exercises because she can't hear them simultaneously. Mm. Okay. Am I missing other questions here? Okay, so here, um, there's a question about internet, uh, internet troubles. My experience, this is from Esther Tandia, my experience teaching vocal um, lessons online is that the students have difficult uh, internet connection because of signal. Yeah. So turning off the video helps. <laughs> um, but I can't see the expression of the singing. So I asked that person to send a video recording instead. Do you have another way? Right now, that sounds like the only way, yeah. right? Yeah, right now, yeah. So you really just make do with what you have. And with the limitations, you, you can't, right? There was one person who said that the piano classes for their church music school have been put on hold for the last three months because the internet just could not work either. Mm. So like any suggestions how to continue the class? Yeah. Could not right. work or it's, it's not good enough, it's not stable? I mean, if, if the main piano teacher can just do, I, I've been doing one minute lessons, right? Small lessons, one minute video. Uh, I'll say, this is the drill I want. Jang, 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 jang. Jang, 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 jang. I just send this and I do it slow-mo. I just do like 20 of these one minute videos and I, I send it out. And hopefully they send, they return me a, a one minute or 30 second thing. Mm -hmm. Or if they have done it, it's good. Uh, if they haven't done it, as in they can't do it and then they'll just tell you their problem and then hopefully you can see it. So that to me uh, is like maybe the lowest mm -hmm. uh, difficulty barrier to entry for conducting piano lessons. Mm, yeah, because yeah. real time lessons are tough to carry out yes. if the internet's unstable. So, just submitting a video and bouncing it back and forth might be the uh, the best way. 
Mm. And I think back to the 1980s before the internet was out, people were just writing letters, right? Like, I've been mm. doing this. Let, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Have it here. That's pure cool. analog. Mm. Unless the um, phone, I have heard people learn over the phone. I mean, okay. What do they do over mm-hmm. the phone? As, as in, I've heard of lessons over the phone. Like, they'll just put the phone on the piano and then they'll play. And then, that's how was it? How was it? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's how I did it when I was small. That's how my <laughs> yeah. dad. Yeah, I've heard of people do yeah. it. And um, with video, I think um, we can also record, if, if we are connected with our student in WhatsApp or any messaging app, we can record it there. It's faster. Yeah. But I think uh, there's a limitation of 30 seconds. So mm. if we can't really have a stable internet connection, that can be a solution. But maybe the general solution is really going back and forth with recordings, videos, or audio. Here is a video editing question on software. Uh, what can you recommend if we want to do a recital or a collaborative performance? Well, that I depends on how it. many collaborators, right? I think mm-hmm. iMovie only lets you do picture in picture, side by side. But mm-hmm. I think uh, DaVinci Resolve lets you do the multiple five people, six people, three by three grid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that uh, the limitations of the software would, would be would be your would narrow down your choices, but then again, video editing is uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I actually wonder if this is something that will be discussed tomorrow. Um, because oh, yes. We have, yes, a part- we have an extra session yeah. tomorrow, session four point two, a continuation from last right. week's session. Yeah, um, I'll I'll talk about that um, when I give final announcements um, before we end the session. I guess this is a good time for us to give some final advice. Do you have some words to encourage our viewers today on how we can continue to cope with this new normal? Um, How can we continue to support one another? I think the viewers would welcome to hear those thoughts. Shall I go first? Okay. Um, For the teachers out there listening, um, if you've been teaching for a long time, you know what you are teaching. And I'm sure of that. The only thing that changed is the method of teaching. it. It seems to be a big change, but you need to hold on to the thing that you know. And it's a comforting thing that I think that you know what you are teaching. And... um, uh, if you need to take a break, take a break. And I think all of us have to be honest with ourselves that sometimes we really do get burnt out. Mm-hmm. And um, find someone who you can talk to. Uh, listen to a lot of music. Um, and then um, the make technology work for you. That's my final thing. <clears throat> For me, to all the students out there, uh, use this time. I call this time in the mountains because you, you are learning and training alone. Use this time to uh, equip yourself and learn and journey with yourself, understand yourself better to be the best you can be. Learn how to, whether it's cooking or exercising or mm-hmm. learning music or whatever, so that you can be proud to show your new self, improve self to all your classmates when, you, when school opens again, right? I want to, but I, I, did, I didn't exercise. I got fatter, but during, but anyway, I'm saying that I want, I'm proud to tell everyone like after this lockdown, I learned how to do what I learned how to do. I'm better at this, all the stuff that you hoped to do, but mm. you had never had time for. Now you're at home and then you can just practice all that stuff, right? So that's, mm. that's it. Yeah. Show your new improved self. Yeah, be proud of it. Yeah. Amen to that. Amen to that. Yeah. And uh, to those conductors, yeah, let me just share with you that before the COVID-19 came, I really prayed to the Lord, how can I be uh, uh, how can I be a blessing to the Singapore Symphony Chorus and how can I um, reach out to them in more intimate manner? Because you see, it's a very distant uh, professional um, set up before. Well, the Lord opened the door and I think this is just an answer to his prayer. Huh? He, gave, he even offered to me better than what I was asking for. Now I have the chance 
to know my choristers, each single one of them. And I can just read, I can just uh, say that I am so blessed and uh, to have the opportunity and privilege of knowing these people that the Lord bring in front of me. Yeah? And uh, to, I always, I said it before and I will say it again. Yeah? Maybe before I was saying that acquire is not a choir, acquire can be acquired even without a conductor, but a conductor is not a conductor without its choir. Right. But now I can say the other one. Eh? Acquire is not a choir without each other now. So yeah. treasure every moment that you're with someone. I know that many choristers are so tired going to choir rehearsal. Maybe now you miss the choir rehearsal so much. Eh? And treasure the first moment that you have an open face-to-face -face in a physical rehearsal, okay? Treasure that. Thank you. Thank you to our wonderful speakers. Please join me in thanking them for such a productive discussion today and so fun as well. Um, we also want to thank all of the viewers for joining us and for all the questions and even sharing your resources online. Um, actually, uh, Phoebe Bitoon made some videos, uh, theory videos. For that children. Care for children in high school. Mm -hmm. And I think Leah just posted that link, I believe so. Yeah, so please feel free to take a look at some of these links and resources that have been um, shared by our viewers today. Um, before we end in prayer, I'd like to give some final announcements. So I mentioned briefly earlier that there is an additional session tomorrow, session 4.2 of our Salah webinar series. Tomorrow, Saturday at 3 p.m. Uh, Philippine time, Singapore time, on AV editing. This is a hands-on session that will be facilitated by Mr. Tim Tran and also Ms. Noemi Binag. And we're going to talk about the details of audio video production. It's, it's going to be like a how-to session. And they'll walk you through the process. So um, please register for that. You are welcome to join that. And for our very last module, um, yeah, Salah is coming to a close. Next week, we have a special session featuring composer Dan Forrest. Mm -hmm. And the time, instead of the usual 10 a.m., will be at 9 a.m. next um, Friday, July 24. Um, and we hope that you can be there. Uh, Dan is like 12 hours apart, I think, from us where he is in the States. So we're, we're adjusting the time a little bit so that he's still very much awake and um, <laughs> energized to talk to us. Yeah, so we're hoping that you can be part of that as well. So now I think we can end our session with a prayer. Can I please ask Sir UD to lead us? Let's pray. Father, even Paul himself was away from his disciples when he said, speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual song. No distance really prevented them, Lord, in expressing their voices through music, their praises through music. And it is the same even now, that though we are separated because of um, the situation, we are really never uh, away from each other. And we thank you, Father, that we can always meet and that we can always rejoice, encouraging one another. Thank you for the availability of the technology. We know that every perfect and good gift come from above. And Father, we just have to be grateful. We thank you, Lord, that we can have this platform. Guide us now. Give us more joy as we depart and as we meet our respective ministries this coming week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Have a good lunch. Goodbye. Thank you. Wherever you are. Bye-bye.